This is part four. We are on slide 18. We've just looked at penetration of the virus into the cell <coughs> and now from uncoating to synthesis. And just a, um, a note to say that the release of the nucleic acid out of the capsid happens in different places. Many viruses want to get into the nucleus. You can see here some different ways that they might get there. The uh, genome may have been released in the cytoplasm and then it travels and penetrates the nucleus through a nuclear pore. Or the virus um, capsid may itself travel to the nuclear envelope and then the um, genome is released into the nucleus or even a virus that penetrates into the nucleus and then releases its genome. The method and location depends on the type of virus and where it wants to end up. So step three is synthesis. Our virus has got inside and the nucleic acid has been separated from the, uh, the capsid. And now it's up to the virus to start making copies of itself. That's what a virus is all about. And that is part three, synthesis. Two main aspects to synthesis. Number one is making all of the proteins. So the virus has to make all those capsid proteins. It has to make enzymes, typically. It has to make the proteins that uh, comprise the viral spikes. And the other part uh, to synthesis is replication of the viral genome. There are three uh, general kinds of viruses that do things in slightly different ways. There are DNA viruses, RNA viruses, and, and reverse uh, transcribing viruses. And I'll look at those uh, individually uh, later on. Once the virus has made all the pieces, it has to put those pieces together to build the new virus particle. <coughs> most, um, most viruses will assemble their capsid around their genome. So here we have the genome wound into a spiral and the structure of the genome then um, organizes the assembly of the capsomeres to form that helical capsid. Here we have the capsid being built uh, around the genome and then the genome folding up and the capsid uh, enclosing it. And here we have uh, the assembly of the capsid through a different mechanism using these uh, scaffold proteins and then the uh, nucleic acid is um, kind of filled in. <coughs> There'll also be a case of making enzymes, and those enzymes will also have to be packaged inside the virus. We'll look at some of the important vi uh, viral enzymes that must be packaged um, in a second. The location of where this assembly occurs again depends on the virus. Non-enveloped viruses will typically mature in the cytoplasm. Some enveloped viruses will continue to mature as they are leaving the cell. Some DNA viruses will assemble in the nucleus. So our virus has built copies of itself and now it needs to get out of the host cell so that it can, it can uh, go off and start infecting more cells. And once again, the mechanism of release is going to depend on whether our virus has an envelope or not. If the virus is uh, enveloped, it's going to push its way out through 
the existing membrane of the cell. It'll uh, kind of impregnate the cell membrane with its spike proteins. And then it'll push on through and get uh, covered in the envelope. This process is called budding. The viral spikes are inserted in the membrane. A matrix protein, this uh, blue stuff here, is secreted and the whole thing then wraps around the nuclear capsid and is uh, extruded. If you are a non-envelope virus, this mechanism is not available to you. Really the only way uh, that you have is to escape the cell when it dies. So the cell, the non-envelope viruses build up inside Typically then, the cell is caused to self-destruct through this process of apoptosis. The cell bursts open and all of the cell stuff is released along with the virus particles. This breaking of the host cell is also known as lysis. Lysis means to break. We have a video here of uh, that process. Enveloped viruses are usually released from the host cell by a budding mechanism. First, viral spike proteins are inserted into the host cell membrane. Next, the inside of the host cell membrane becomes coated with viral matrix protein. The viral capsid then becomes completely enclosed by the region of the cell membrane into which the spikes and matrix protein are embedded and the virus is released by budding. So sometimes, let's see if I can get this working now. Sometimes too now here, you see that the virus leaves behind some spikes it doesn't have perfect control in the number of spikes it puts into the membrane. And again, uh, leaves kind of, viruses often leave behind these telltale signs that something strange is going on inside the, uh, the cell. So attachment. What do viruses attach to on animal cells? Typically these things called uh, glycoproteins. A protein with a sugar stuck to it. And attachment works by this shape matching. Proteins on the viral spike, glycoproteins on the cell surface, the spike protein being a shape match for the receptor. The receptor doesn't want to receive the viral spike. It has uh, a whole race, often a whole host of other uh, functions that are important to the cells themselves. Penetration. That'll depend on whether you have an envelope or not, whether it is a case of membranes fusing, or whether it's a case of endocytosis. Uncoating is the mechanism by which the nucleic acid is released from the capsid, and that can happen in different places in the cell, depending on the virus type and where the virus wants to end up. Synthesis is the production of all the virus parts. Two general kinds of things are made. Uh, viral proteins, capsid proteins, spike proteins, and enzymes are also proteins. And then the second part of stuff that's made are the viral or the replica viral genomes. Assembly. <clears throat> all the pieces are assembled into a, a new set of nuclear capsids. If they are naked viruses, those nuclear capsids are the, uh, uh, the uh, virions. Assembly can happen in different places in the cell, depending on what kind of virus it is. And then release. How do the viruses escape if our virus is uh, an envelope virus, it's going to have to pick up the envelope 
as it pushes out of the cell in this process of budding. If our virus doesn't have an envelope, it'll have to kill the cell or rely on the cell dying. And then the cell will burst and the virus particles will be released. Okay, that's enough for uh, this section. Let me stop now.